Good day guys! In this video I will be making a powerful 18 volts 9 amp hours of capacity Makita battery from a DIY battery kit and a high energy lithium ion cells. Makita has an extremely wide cordless power tools range, but at the same time they are making from 3 to 5 amp hours of capacity 18 volts batteries only. It's bummer because some of tools are extremely thirsty for energy. That's why I bought this DIY 9 amp hours battery kit for Makita power tools and will make high energy battery for heavy duty power tools. I still cannot understand why Makita isn't making such capacity batteries in their lineup. All other well known cordless power tools manufacturers are doing this for years already, like Dewalt. Milwaukee, Ryobi, Bosch, and so on. The battery kit consists of the battery housing, cells holder, a few stickers, connection tabs of 0.2 thickness, which will not be used, and I will explain a bit later why, battery protection circuit, the state of charge indicator with sticker, and a few mounting hardware pieces. This battery housing will be filled with 15 pieces of LG HG2-18650 cells rated for 3000 mAh of capacity and 20 amps of continuous discharge current. Because I'll make 5S 3P battery configuration for 18 volts and 9 amp hours, this battery could easily give up to 60 amps of continuous discharge current. Before working further, it's always a good thing to double check if all cells have equal or very close voltage. In my case, all cells were fully charged before, so the voltage is spot on. Each positive cell side was additionally protected with insulating rings. In the kit were included those connection tabs. They are nicely fabricated, but made from the wrong material. Steel or nickel plated steel. For high energy batteries, this isn't a good choice due to its bad electric characteristics. So instead, I'll be using 0.15mm thickness pure nickel strips. If you want to be sure that you have pure nickel tabs, grab a rotary tool and grind it. The steel or nickel plated steel tab will make sparks, while the pure nickel don't. Quick and 100% accurate method. The best option to connect lithium ion cells is to spot weld them. Additionally, I tripled the nickel strips on the main positive and negative battery pack terminals. This was done to avoid any heating and increase resistance issues when I will pull maximum amps from the battery pack. If everything was done right, I should get around 20 volts due to the fully charged cells. Perfect. Let's move on to the electronics part. Battery charge discharge protection module and state of charge indicator. First, connected both modules together. Then added additional wire to the terminal marked as 4 volts. And lastly, soldered main positive and negative thick wires. Now, the whole unit could be mounted and connected to the battery pack. Remember this additional wire which was soldered to the 4 volts terminal? It should be connected to the first cell's group positive side. Regarding it, the protection board is measuring the state of charge and will disconnect the charge when it is full, or will cut the load when it reaches the bottom discharge level. Yes, yes, 
this module is measuring only one group of cells and assuming that the rest of the groups connected in series will have the same voltage. This isn't the perfect method on paper, but in real life it works stunningly fine. This is my repaired and extended capacity Makita 18 volts battery, which I built two years ago. It has protection circuit inside within the same design and combined old 18650 cells from two Makita batteries. All those two years this battery was often used without any issues. Let's check the state of balance of each cell group. They are perfectly balanced. So, if the battery pack made from used cells could stay in balance, I see no worries why the battery assembled from new cells could be acting differently. To cover exposed battery terminals, I glue them with insulating paper. The assembling process is more or less straightforward. The final touches with the stickers. Last check if nothing changed and we still have the needed voltage. And yes we do. Let's place it on a charger. It detects as a genuine Makita battery and starts charging. More likely it tries to charge and a few seconds later indicates that the battery is full. What is right? Let's test it with the power tools. 18 volts power tools works perfectly. Because I made two of those batteries, I now could power even 36 volts power tools, like this leaf blower. Yes, those batteries are a bit heavier than a regular up to 5 amp hours Makita batteries and potentially will be not the most comfortable option for daily use with a drill or any other small tool. But my main purpose is to use them with a high power demanding cordless tools like grass trimmer or leaf blower, where the weight isn't so important. And yes, by connecting those two batteries in series, I could power any other electric device driven by 36 volts motors, for example, a mini quad. But let's leave this build for another video. Thanks for watching and till the next time. Bye.